We just finished looking at a couple of videos on Markov chains uh, and simulated sort of gambling, speculating uh, similar bet each time on a equiprobable outcome of heads or tails against somebody with a lot of money. And eventually you always lose all your money, which is strange because uh, the bet is equiprobable. But the person you're betting against has more, much more money than you. So it, it's strange, but the interesting thing that we saw was that you can actually accrue quite a nice sum of money and the bets, the length of the bets and the number of heads or tail coin tosses can actually run into the multiple thousands. And uh, we saw that the NumPy random number generator might have been more, maybe less deterministic than the Python standard library random generator. But in any event, I thought another interesting video follow-up would be what if we were flipping a coin a thousand times and we wanted to see, you know, how many times we get 10 heads in a row or 10, even like 10 tails in a row. And we know that, you know, the binomial theorem, right? You say it, it's basically the probability to the uh, n times, right? So we know that the odds are going to be 0.5 and we know that we're doing it 10 times. We want 10 heads or tails in a row. So if we want to say, you know, how many, how often is that going to occur? We're going to have to wait on average 1,024 times. So it's like 1,024 tosses to get one string of heads or tails consecutive. So I thought it'd be cool to just say, hey, why don't we just show that? Why don't we compute that by brute force? and then use some Python standard library tools to uh, verify that we did a good job. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a string called outcomes. It's just gonna be a string. And then we're gonna say for toss in range 1024, because we're gonna get that binomial theorem says it should happen at least once in that many tosses. And we're gonna say the, uh, uh, the toss outcome is gonna be equal to mpy random random, which is going to be a number between 0 and 1, we're going to say if the toss outcome is less than 0.5, we're going to say outcomes append, oh no, we're not, it's a, it's a string. So we're going to say head, and we're going to copy that logic over again, and we're going to say greater than append tail. Now you might say, what if it's exactly 0 0.50, but you know, sit at home and run this until this equals 0.50. <laughs> I honestly don't know how long it's going to take to get to that value, my friend, but uh, think about the precision with which it's executing and all that stuff, and you'll see that my logic here appears to be sound. So, you know, when we think about outcomes, this is what we get. We get a string of tails, tails, heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, tails, 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 yada, 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 yada. So we're trying to see whether or not we found in these 1,024 uh, values, and I'm going to import something from uh, collections import counter. So if I do a, a counter on outcomes, you'll see that we've got 480 tails, 544, uh, I'm sorry, 480 heads, 544 tails. So, you know, we could keep running this a few times, it'll change. Um, yeah, it, but essentially, you know, the, the cool thing about this is that, it, imagine you're looking at some data for an A-B test, right? Essentially, you might see this many conversions for one cell if you're splitting the traffic equally um, but really, there's no difference. This was random. So that's just an important thing to note. 504 versus 520. This may look, you know, uh, determined. But, you know, if you just keep running this stuff, you get some pretty pretty big differences. But in any event, counter, uh, it, it's kind of a cool thing. It just counts the frequency of items within an iterable. And an iterable could be a string. It could be an, uh, a list, a set, a uh, dictionary items or keys or values uh, it's not an integer so you know and if you ever want to figure out like what the uh, what the magic methods are for something you could look at the dir of it 
and you'll see that you can actually iterate over it. So for, for val and you can print it. You can iterate over it and print it. So iterable, counter. All right. So now with the outcomes that we have, how do we figure out what the longest uh, subsequence is of heads or tails? And this is a classic computer science problem. I think sometimes it comes up with people who are trying to interview at large companies. Uh, how do you find in, in the fastest time, maybe, it's, 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 no, it's going to be linear time, O of N, because you're not creating any intermediate data structures or, or storing things. How do you, uh, how do you count the longest subsequence? Like, say this was the longest one, you'd say six. And then the variants of the problem ask for what was the value of the subsequence. So we're not going to talk about it in a real academic way or you know scientific way we're just going to use something out of the standard library so I'm going to import something from iter tools we're going to import group by and group by is useful when you're trying to do grouping uh, you know thanks uh, captain obvious but um, I really don't use it a whole lot this is a good case for it because we're interested in consecutive values so the easiest way to explain group by is just to start packing on it. So, so for for key group in group by iterable, which is outcomes, which is a string, if we print key and group, what you'll notice is we have the values in the iterable going, uh, you know, going there, but the group thing is not. It, it's not really doing anything. It's just called an iter tools grouper object. So a lot of times you'll see that it's it's a generator expression or it's an object that hasn't been called yet. So you can call a list on group, right? So the thing that it's doing here is you see how we start off with three T's. That T is keying into those three T's. And then we have a head. And that head, there's only one of them in a row. So it's represented by that. And there's only one T. Then we have three more heads. And then we have a whole lot of T's here. And it's keyed off of that. So this is kind of cool. Now, the one thing to note about the group object, if I go to print it again, it, it doesn't, um, like, if, if I call a list on group again, it, it's nothing there because it's been exhausted. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a um, like an outcome tracker. And sometimes when you don't feel like fiddling around with copying things or whatever, just create another data structure if the memory really doesn't matter. So I'm going to say uh, custom or outcome tracker append key and I don't, here's the thing, I don't care that this is three T's in the list, I just care that it's a T and this has a length of three. I just care that this is an H and it has a length of six. So you kind of see where I'm going here. I just want to get the length of the list called on the group to realize the value in that expression. So uh, append takes one argument Right, so I want to append a tuple actually. So uh, this will convert those two arguments to a single object. And you'll see if you look at the first value in the outcome tracker, it's going to be the T and three. And if we look at the first, you know, 100 items, you know, we'll have a bunch of these here. And now we're starting to get closer to a, uh, you know, to an answer we just need to see that for well really we we just want we don't care if it's a head or a tail right we just want to see what what the value is so hell let's just say sorted outcome tracker uh the key is going to be equal to a kind of an inline function here a lambda x and we're going to be sorting on the second value in the tuple you'll notice that it goes uh from low to high by default should take an argument called reverse equals true let's scroll back up so now we do definitely see that uh 
For tails, we got nine in a row. For heads, we got eight in a row many times. But we never got 10 in a row. So let's actually go back up here and you know maybe we'll run it one more time. Run the whole thing, right? So now this is a self-contained. Well, what do, what do we know about this though? We do know we had nine tails but eight heads. We did have slightly more tails. So maybe had we had an you know an equal balance of the two. It might have looked a little bit different. In any event, let's take a look and sorted. Let's go back up and let's, I don't really care, like the first 10 elements, right? So, okay, now we had 12 heads three times. That seems really improbable. Let's run the whole simulation again. Okay, so now we have 11. Okay, that's interesting. So what are the odds of getting it 11 times? We would need to run it 1,048 times, 2,048 times. So that's interesting. Um, and you know, again, these random algorithms are not perfectly deterministic, but you know, that's kind of a uh, that's kind of a neat thing. You can um, let me let me show you one more thing. Uh, so if we take this, another cool use of the counter. Let's stop that. And we can say, you know, all tails equals x for x in if x uh, 0 equals t. And let me just uh, indent that a little bit. So we'll say all tails. So that's fine. And really, I just want the frequency because I want to get the... Um, I want to get a frequency of the the subsequence matches. So I'll say x1, and then all tails will just be a list of the frequencies. And then I can call counter on that. Now I'll say most common 10. And there we go. We can see that we had one 120 times. We had two in a row 63 times. We had three in a row 39 times, four in a row 13 times, five in a row nine times, and notice like this pattern of like cutting in half, cutting by 65% or so, cutting in half in half again. And you know, if you wanted to change this to evaluate tails, you know, you could you change that to heads and it'll probably show you a similar thing. But uh, yeah, so I thought that was cool. We looked at the binomial. Uh, theorem there we extended our sort of talk about the Markov chain and gambling running out of funds and we looked at tossing a coin uh, the number of times to achieve the expectation that we would get at least 10 in a row once of either head or tails and we kind of did that and uh, we had a little bit of fun working on the Python standard library while doing so so I hope you had fun maybe learn a little bit of Python and uh, you know now you can go back to flipping coins